Defect Act 1. Four Sturdily Elite. No matter what. Although we at least get to upgrade first. Possibility for shop first. Second half of the act, sketchy, with slime boss at the end of it. Tough. Tough toenails. Hey there, not Jose. Defect sure is unique. If I was to give one quick tip with getting started on Defect, it's that your first few card picks should try to fill your orb slots. Basically, no matter what. You want to get those orb slots filled with something. Lightning orbs, frost orbs, dark orbs, doesn't matter. So, solid advice then becomes take the first couple orb generating cards that you see. From there, finding a direction to build it could be tough. Do I ever go for a transform 2 here? Taking 18 damage at the start is a little risky. But turning two strikes into literally anything else could be a dramatic improvement on our deck here. Could also be a significant detriment, depending on what we get. How do you solve the system, Wolf? Transform into self-repair. Yeah, no kidding. I'm going to risk it. I think transforming two is a really good start for defect, even though... Oh, dear. Um... Yeah, even though... Uh-oh. Hmm. Do I go to the shop? I think I might need to, so that I can buy a power. That means we're either fighting this elite or the burning elite. I don't like those options at all. Let's find out what happens. Hey there, Chrono. I've got cheeseburgers on the way. We ended up going with cheeseburgers, a pork meal, and zucchini ciabatta flatbread sandwiches, which I'm really excited for as our vegetarian option for the week. I like it. You know, that first combat actually went pretty well, despite the bizarre transform, frankly bizarre transform. Here we either go charge battery, giving us some um, pretty decent block and energy generation, or we pick up a cool headed for a frost orb. Early frost orb can be pretty helpful. Especially if I take a power. We'll pick it up. Banana, heal me. Nice. That means we're no longer down health, at least. Which should make our first elite a lot more manageable. At least that's the hope. Two block per turn. Might have wanted to strike twice there, actually. Nope, we're good. Early combats went pretty well. Another cool-headed is terrifying. Static Discharge might be the play here. It's a power. Whenever we receive unblocked attack damage, channel 1 upgraded to lightning makes force field cheaper, notably. And it's, well, not that good against uh, uh, Slime Boss, though. I guess I'll take it. I do like Static Discharge in the later game quite a bit. Oh. Heat sinks, huh? Okay, Focus Potion can get me through the Burning Elite, if nothing else. That's pretty important. So that's what I'm inclined to do, is buy this Focus Potion, and then perhaps one of the Frost Orb cards to go with. Probably Cold Snap. Or an attack that also channels a Frost Orb. Unfortunately, not really interested in Heat Sinks here. Ninja Llama would go Cold Snap, Focus Potion. That's where I'm overwhelmingly leaning towards, but I'm just quickly considering other choices here. Can I do Cold Snap, Focus Potion, go for the eyes? No. Cold Snap, card removal? Also no. I could do... No, not even Cool-Headed card remove. Cold, go for the eyes, card remove is an option. And I think Go for the eyes would be nice with Aesthetic Discharge, but... Getting this Focus Potion so that I can defeat this Elite seems like a priority. For that elite fight, I believe I need to upgrade our Static Discharge so that we get two Lightning Orbs per strike we take. And then the idea will be 
mostly block, but not all, always. Ever skip cards in the first three picks on Defect? Very, very rarely. I think Defect has a really, really good pool of common cards. And so it's almost always worth taking one or two of them. That said, if you have a transform start or start with card removals, it can be worth skipping early because Defect really does perform very well with a small deck of cards a lot of the time, I think. Oh, Warp Tongues. Warp Tongues for a long time. Hmm. Let's just take the targeted upgrade. Shame Pain doesn't work with Static Discharge. It'd be a cool combo if they did. Since pain is not attack damage. Maybe he didn't even need to use the focus potion, but this enemy is pretty dangerous. For 12, 20, take a little bit. Or block 5, 5, 5. 23, don't take anything. Keep the two frost orbs for now. I think that's correct for the moment. And I want to take some damage here. Twenty-four damage, currently blocking twenty. This would be twenty-five. Very smooth, thanks to the Focus Potion. We get an incredibly good first relic, the Fossilized Helix. Just outright preventing the first time we would lose health each combat. I also very much like White Noise here, further working to make our Force Field cheap, while being itself a random power. I think Aggregate or Rebound could also both be acceptable here. Yeah, it, that incredible against slime, although the awkwardness with static discharge is not lost on me. Let's take this white noise. Now we get a whole bunch of upgrades, which I really like. We can upgrade overclock, but first let's upgrade... Get the white noise upgraded. Make that free. And then maybe start upgrading our card draw. Go left here, get the extra upgrade. An early prayer wheel is incredible here. Normal enemies now drop an extra card reward, two very good rare relics in a row. We spicy now. Buffet. Really does feel like this overclock wants an upgrade though. Take Melter, will take an Echo Form, I suppose. Right? Seems okay. First card we play each turn is played two times. Very early Echo Form. Echo Form, if built around, could be mighty strong. Essentially, you get to duplicate the best card in your hand every single turn. And that's mighty good. Mighty, mighty good. And what's really nice is that the Fossilized Helix makes playing the Echo Form very easy to do, because we can just absorb the first hit and get Echo Form in play this way. Full block or double cold snap here. Bring you to 60, bring you to 51, bring you to 45, 42. Not a... not enough. The powers. Hmm. 
the Blunkening. Fool. I guess I could have actually just killed on that turn, but I didn't want to. I wanted more power. Well, that was sufficiently silly. Boot sequence could be okay. Sunder's an option. Nothing wrong with a ball lightning in here. One more orb channeling card. That's also a direct damage attack. It's not bad. Although currently we're looking to beat Slime Boss, so maybe we should just start skipping cards for now. Look for upgraded cards next act. Ravenock asks, how do you build around Echo? Is it adding more powers? I deal with... Um, I deal with big powers... Or sorry, I deal with Echo Form is any uh, big expensive card, essentially. Stuff like Glacier, Electrodynamics, Tempest, Rainbow. Since you're duplicating one card each turn, you want that one card to be the strongest card possible. Hey there, Solar System Wolf. We'll, we're doing a sponsored uh, collaboration with HelloFresh today. So you or anybody else can head to the HelloFresh website. If you live in the U.S., use that code above my head to get a big discount on convenient, healthy, relatively affordable meals delivered to your home via HelloFresh. Doesn't actually say HelloFresh on it. You're right. It heckin doesn't. That promotion, at least that code, is only available in the U.S. at the moment, unfortunately. Good for us, but not for them. Let's skip all these cards. And now I think more than ever, it's important to upgrade this overclock as super draw. More high cost cards become desirable. Stuff like doom and gloom, stuff like self repair. Stuff like... Defrag. I get three orbs, so correct play is actually doing the following. Don't play any other cards, so that I only take one here. And block this hit. That's pretty cool. Could use the block potion here. I'll just take the eight damage and get three more lightning orbs. Oh yeah, I also wanted to move that. Real quickly here. Let's do... That. That looks better. Yeah, that's perfect. We've also got on-screen alerts for general purposes, courtesy of HelloFresh today as well. Sundial is here. We've missed a couple sundials today. Bonus energy if we draw through the whole deck. Hmm. Streamline, beam, claw. I think this is a situation where I have to not ignore Sweeping Beam. Currently, this deck does not have a lot of area damage. Our best source of damage is Lightning Orbs, which target randomly. That can be a real problem in Act 2, from what I've seen. So having something, anything, that can do damage to all enemies, even if it's not a lot of damage to all enemies, can really help. I'm going to take and upgrade this Sweeping Beam. But I'm not going to take this curse. No deal, Serpent Man. But in order for Sweeping Beam to feel any good at all, it really does need that upgrade on it. So that it's 9 instead of 6. That's a good start. Here, just uh, double up on that, shall we? Slime Kroosh. 5 Static Discharge. Yeah. Boop. Let's 
18 is almost a kill. Or an, almost a split, rather. Letting me get rid of two more slimed here. And then on this turn, we split by doubling zap. It's not a very good split, mind you. But remember, I get five orbs every time I take damage. And most of the slimes in the deck are actually gone. There's only four now. I've also got sweeping beams that I can double. Just get rid of this. Take one on purpose, get five lightning orbs. Double overclock is a little scary, but I get energy from the sundial here. Again, very few slime remaining. Bloop. If you double a slime, well, that slime gets played two times. Hey, thank you to whoever just used that HelloFresh code. Hope you enjoy your tasty, tasty meals when they arrive. Just gonna draw exactly those three. That doesn't seem helpful. I'll take a one. Hee hee hee. Uh oh. Wait, this is fine. GG. GG. Some incredible choices here. Buffer letting us block additional sources of damage each combat. All for one returns our zero cost cards, notably getting back overclock, although that can be bad. Meanwhile, Electrodynamics is yet another power and enables our lightning orbs to hit everything, which I think is incredible here with the static discharge. Let's take this Electro. We also now get a boss relic and what a heck of, what a heck, yes. What a heck of choices we have here. Buffer just outright stacks with fossilized Helix. So if you play Buffer when you have Helix in play, then you'll prevent the next two instances of damage. Buffer, very good. You can think of Helix as just starting you with one stack of buffer, which is exactly what it does. Our super early force field here was a transform from floor one. It's kind of worked out now that we have four powers. So our options, frozen core. If we end our turn with any empty orb slots, channel a frost orb. Currently, we're very good at filling the orb slots, so I don't think a frozen core is very good here. Calling Bell, a unique curse, and three relics. One common, one uncommon, one rare. Actually, not bad here. I think the bonus relics would go a long way for us. Possibly especially in conjunction with Prayer Wheel. Uh, or Nuclear Battery, starting us out with a Plasma Orb. It's more energy on turn one and two more energy if we evoke it. But often ends up instantly evoked and lost, I think. Although simply getting Echo Form in play is a good use of the Nuclear Battery. I think I'll be taking the Culling Bell. Three random relics. There's a lot of ones we could get that are very good. For example, double boat thingies. We now have 10 block on turn one and 18 block on turn three. No block on turn two, but we do have area damage via the letter opener. That's pretty spicy. I think that was an excellent, excellent find overall. I think with these relics and these potions, we're in pretty good shape overall here in Act 2. I should be okay to fight one elite at least. Possibly this one. Um, and then maybe we can make it two. Two is the maximum number of elites we can do this act. That's correct. Okay, let's start here. We'll probably go combat event, combat shop, something like that. But let's just see how we perform initially. Wow. 
Pretty sad so far. But the free block was very helpful. If I take one, I'll get two lightning orbs. I actually think I want to take one here. Rather than playing the force field, playing the defend on purpose to let static discharge help me out. Can't win without using the letter the uh, sundial, unfortunately. Another block potion. Unupgraded cards. Defragment. Well, that's a power I'll take. Focus. Heck yeah. I do realize I'm covering up the seed. I'm okay with that for, for this run. The seed is Pog SE55. That's right. That's right. Type that into your Slay the Spire to receive a Floor 1 fossilized helix and hamburgers in the mail. I will take that defragment as a way to further scale us up. What we'd like most now is further card removals and an energy generating card of some kind. Are the burgers fossilized as well? I, I would hope not. That sounds really chewy. Yeah, that sounds really chewy. Another good fight for the captain's wheel. But again, the turn two is our weakness. Rude. So. Well. Zap dual cash should win. Without further incidents. We do get our potion back. Loop plus triggers the passive uh, triggers triggers the front orb two times. With a free upgrade, that's worth thinking about. We could take another white noise. That's also worth thinking about. I'll take them both. That might be too many powers. We need a heat sinks now. Card removals also help a lot. You are a kind soul. Prepare for purification. Prepare. Prepare. Can play all of these and the force field, buffering this hit. I'm down. I'm down for that. Double ouch. Wow, that was lucky. Double beam. 
Yeah, that was correct. Another force field, I think, could be a really, really good addition to this deck. With how many powers we now have. Let's do two, two force fields. And then we can start to add maybe some card draw. I will dip into the shop. We can afford a removal here. Aye, and there's the energy generation we wanted. Aggregate. Energy for every four cards in the draw pile. Perfect. Self-repair also worth considering here. Although I can't afford self-repair removal like I can aggregate removal. So, there's that. How are we going to deal with the Awaken one? I'm not sure, to be honest. That is going to involve some prepping. But our hope is to, to simply win with all the powers in play by virtue of mass relics or some such. First step, get to the Awakened One. Easier said than done. All right, if I'm going to upgrade any one card, Electro, Defrag, Aggregate, White Noise are all really good considerations here. Let's start with Defrag. These are all problems for future Baylor. Exactly. All right, first elite is... The three Slavermans we drew Electro on turn one, as we were supposed to. Good job, Electro. You did it. I can play both of these. So that is 27 block. I'll buffer this. Any point to using either potion at the moment? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. This is also a good thing. All right, good. Have fun, nerds. Well, I have one focus, so I'll block for exactly eight. I don't want to block for eight. Shoot. Hmm. So I do... Nine, nine, twelve, eighteen. That's forty-eight. That means the best line is as follows. Wait. Oh, we're one off. Never mind. Did I math that wrong? No, whatever. Ball lightning is an interesting option. More lightning orbs on demand. Uh, in particular, just having a non-exhausting way to get lightning orbs into the deck is a good idea. It's not upgraded, though. Hmm. Hold off. Understood. <laughs> Maybe I should have added it. <laughs> Thanks, Whetstone. Thanks. I was just thinking I wanted to recycle. Let's find it. Thankfully, there weren't four copies of Decay. Heck. Now I have two zaps. Heck. That's too many zaps. My favorite card to get right now. Skim. I think. Probably skim. Can I afford another card removal? I feel like I was 75 gold at the last shop. Eh, I'll wait. I'll wait. Oof. Oh, 
Gross. Can't skip Static Discharge. That's not acceptable. I guess I'll use the Power Potion. Aha! It's like I never didn't play it. Or something. Beautiful. Alright, not bad. Let's keep the looped frost for the moment. Beautiful. Smiling mask. Okay, now our card removals at shops are nice and cheap, so we'll have to make sure to get several of those. I really like the idea of adding one more force field to this deck, really making it a true force field deck, so to speak, with the plan being to play these zero-cost force fields over and over and over again once all the powers are in play. To facilitate that, we're going to want some more card draw. Easier said than done. Nice try, nerds. Fools. Compiled River Plus could be all right. Chaos Plus could be all right. Just random orbs to fill up the orb slots. I like it. I like that more than I like the ball lightning, actually. Welcome. Whenever you do the Awakened One, Rex you. Any tips on getting around the Awakened One, says Arthur AoE. In order to make a deck like this work against the Nerd Bird, you need a really solid defensive plan. Weakness is one of the best ways to get there, whether it be a blind or a go for the eyes, to reduce the bird's damage output. But the other thing to do is to make sure that at least a solid percentage of the defensive of the powers that you add to your deck can help you defensively, um, such as by scaling Frost plus Focus repeatedly. That can be another way to get there. If you can scale your orbs through non-power methods, speaking of go for the eyes, there's one right here that I should strongly consider for exactly that reason. Welcome. Don't want a Writhe Curse. I do want to fight these nerds. Bloop. Is that a bloop I heard? My god it is, thanks whoever used their Hello Fresh code. Much, much thanks. Buffer. Come on, Aggregate, you got this. I guess I'm allowed to play this too, right? No reason not to. So we got 13 block. Let's just fire potion this guy. My life easy. The double beam. Rebemination. Slow, uh, red masking fight, but we definitely got there. Start of each combat, apply one week to all enemies. I also really like both Chill Plus as a way to get Frost Orbs quickly deployed. 
or this Equilibrium as a way to retain cards from turn to turn. Both are very good here. Chill is very nice against the Awakened One, actually, because it lets us get three Frost Orbs immediately. Let's, let's take this. And let's get an upgrade, I suppose, on this Go for the Eyes. For two turns of weakness. Champ here shouldn't be a problem, as long as we get our Echo Form down in anything resembling a reasonable time frame. And start doubling our Orb Powers. There we go. We're gonna have a good time. So now I can double loop, double defrag. No frost. Try to keep the buffer here. Success. I'll come back around to double these. Don't want this Dark Orb right now. Believe it or not. Lose the buffer now or play overclock one time? Play overclock. And lose the buffer. Dang it. Okay, we should bring him below half shortly. Execute incoming sooner than I'd like it to. Never mind. We're prepared. Let's loop this Dark Orb. 66 damage, Dark Orb. <laughs> I lose one of my buffers to the burn. Uh-oh. GG. That was a little bit yikes, I'm not going to lie. I think we have some cool options here. All for one, get stuff back from the discard pile. Gets the go for the eyes back, gets the steam barrier back. Nothing hugely important, though. Reboot activates the sundial, which I particularly like. I think Creative AI would be too many powers here, particularly if we end up facing the Awakened One. Let's grab the Reboot. Reboot has the potential problem of putting us further away from Echo Form, but I think that's okay. Deck definitely wants more energy here, so I'm going to take the Cursed Key, giving us one energy per turn. Yes, we do get a curse, because I do have to open the last chest of the act. That does put us one card removal behind, but I think we're okay for that. Otherwise, doubling potions, four orb slots each could be interesting. Black Star could be nice. Hotashi, thank you so much for that 20 months of support. You cash in a Slay the Spire question? You certainly may. Hey, hey, everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. You certainly may. And it is Awakened One indeed.
In a vacuum, I think Echo Form is one of the strongest cards available to the defect. Card duplication in general is a very, very strong and hard to get effect um, that lets you multiply your strongest cards. And Echo Form gives you easy, consistent access to that. Echo Form is not always the correct pick. It is a, a card that doesn't do anything on the turn you play it, and it is a card that requires you to spend three energy on it. But more so than other characters, Defect has the ability to pay that three cost um, with relatively little loss of momentum, thanks to a wide variety of energy generating cards and a lot of scaling cards to capitalize on the additional gain from. Currently not upgrading Echo Form. Uh, the upgrade makes it not ethereal, so if you don't play it the first time you see it, it sticks around. But for the most part, if we don't play it the first time we see it, we're not going to play it at all anyway. So I'm not generally too concerned with an upgrade on an Echo Form. It's got utility. We can hit three shops this act, and with the Smiling Mask, those can be three cheap card removals too. I like that a lot. Let's get some cards removed. These basic defends aren't doing it for me anymore, you know? Get him, letter opener. Lock the explosion, apparently. Two fresh oranges. Mmm. Delicious. Got him. The best form, I would say on average, Echo Form is the, uh, well, no, Wraith Form is the best form. But second place would be Echo Form. Easy second place every time. For real orb slots, maybe. Charge battery plus or a hologram. Hologram might even be better here. Letting me get back. Go for the eyes. Letting me get back. Force fields. Even unupgraded. I'm taking a hollow here. And I guess I'll lose one of the capacities. Not both, but one. Corruption form. That one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. Twelve, twelve, twelve. Leave them all on a shred of health. Oh wait. Never mind. Kill them all instantly. Thanks, letter opener. Upgraded cold snap. More orb. It's a little late for algorithm, but echo form can make it relevant at least. I'd rather have another cool headed. Let's try to find a cool headed instead of this uh, cold snap. Not interested in a capacitor at the moment because I don't feel like I have enough frost. Or in a focus, excuse me, to make additional orb slots that good. Although that could change if we get our hands on. Well, that could just change. 999 gold, huh? Interesting. I could remove those curses relatively quickly, but we have to get another curse from the uh, cursed key, too. So I get. Two curses for this fight, remove one. One curse for this fight, one curse for this fight. Get another curse. One curse for this fight. And then we finally have no curses before the Awakened One. That could cost me a lot of health. But that said, if I go to three shops, 999 gold would do a really good job for us. Might be better off just taking the rare relic here. We also get a card reward. And some money. I think that's too many curses. Fight a boss. Turn two could really hurt. Bull fight. So I can go electro force fields? Just go force field hologram. Take a minute amount of damage.
Wait, I'll come here. It's a lot of burns. Unceasing top. We were have no cards in hand. Draw a card. Kind of whatever. Tempest is kind of interesting. Definitely take a fruit juice. Tempest could be a ton of orb generation. Especially with aggregate. Indeed. Hmm. Hologram dual cast. Defend deals 16, 19, 24 damage to all enemies. Good. If I defragment, then I miss out on the letter opener. I need the letter opener to get the kill here. Thank you. No, thank you. Okay, we made it to the first store. <laughs> Medical kit. Interesting. Medical kit allows me to exhaust status cards. Notably, very notably, our burn from overclock, meaning overclock becomes a reusable, <laughs> renewable resource. I like comboing that with a card removal, and I like comboing that with cool-headed. Get rid of this extra zap that we ended up with. <laughs> All for one could have been decent, too. Creative <laughs> AI for infinite scaling. Infinite scaling of the boss. I don't want to give the Awakened One infinite scaling. I wonder how good we are against Giant Head. Guess that really depends on where Echo Form is. That was a really good turn. This must 
we dual cast that. My loop. Beautiful. Look at these force fields. Look at them. There's recycle. Okay, recycle should be our win con against the awakened one, probably. Allowing us to exhaust all the powers that we don't want to play and therefore not have to draw them over and over and over and over again. In uncomfortable silence. This static discharge really doesn't help against this opponent. I can at least play it to get rid of it. We'll need to upgrade this recycle pretty quickly. Once we do that, everything should be good. This is the penultimate turn. I understand. Just barely meeting the numerical requirements for this fight. But we definitely got there. Wow, second Echo Form or an upgraded hologram, both very potent here. I might actually prefer the hologram, quite frankly. Second Echo Form is maybe too many powers. At least for the Awakened One fight. Whereas the second hologram is going to allow us to use this recycle to do filthy things so much more quickly. Let's take this hologram, especially with a free upgrade. I know you can echo your echo, and I'd love to do it, but I don't think it's appropriate. Have to open this chest, get the blue key. There is a pain inside. We can remove it here, though, thankfully. Double orb walkers with a pain in the deck. That's quite the battle. I would get quite a bit of money and a rare relic if I could win, but now that's a big if. If I could win. This is definitely one of the fights that taxes me quite a lot. I don't think it's a good idea to take these two. I think this fight could ultimately cost me all of the health that I'm going to need to beat Awakened One. I really need to be able to upgrade Recycle if I'm going to win that fight. So I don't think I should fight these. I'll skip. Though I do appreciate everybody's encouragements. Another recycle. Intriguing. Oh. 
Very intriguing. I saw Mind Bloom and Double Walkers already. Let's just take more combats then. First up, Reptomancer. Unceasing top. Hmm. Trade three frost for three lightning. I'll do it. I have buffers mainly. So as long as I can kill all the daggers, which I can. I'll just block Repto conveniently. Medical kit, unceasing top, value. Oh, wait. That was still pretty good, though. You'd love to see it. Wait, no! You no longer love to see it. Cycle some stuff against the Awakened One. Another upgraded Cool Headed? Perfect. I think with the upgraded Recycle, we're going to be there. We're gonna have what we need. And we also get four more card rewards from these last two combats, thanks to this prayer wheel. It's pretty spicy. That's right, Medical Kid is just statuses, not also curses. Sadly. Speaking of, ouch. But wait. Lock one. Buffer now. Whatever. Is this how we beat Awakened One? Now that would be a way to do it. Just don't play any powers and reprogram instead. No, there's no way that'll work, right? Well, maybe. We recycled enough stuff. I think we can do it with what we have, though. And we shouldn't try this ridiculous tangential thing for one fight. But that's a, that's one way to potentially beat Awakened One with a defect deck, is kind of include just a couple of cards that can answer the fight outside of your usual strategy. Four hundred damage letter opener. Let's go.
Shame I never got uh, aggregate upgraded. But I think upgraded recycle is going to have to cut it. Not going to take any of these cards. Would have loved to see Skim in particular. Keep Potion of Capacity. I might use Potion of Capacity against the Awakened One, too. We'll see what our turn one looks like. Um, but I would like a little bit of extra help. And I have enough money to buy a potion, at least, in Act 4. Okay, onwards. Upgrade Recycle. So, we'll be playing some of our powers. Not all of our powers, but some of our powers during this fight. We'll definitely be playing Awake... Uh, Echo Form, excuse me. Almost called it Awakened One for some reason. Awakened Form. Blah. Probably the Deep Rag. I won't be playing Electrodynamics. I don't think. Let's use this now. Okay. This gets me draw at least. A lot of Tempest. Okay, here's our Echo Form. That is getting played. Double Echo Form? Sure. Play that too. So, not yet. Easy. Okay, first two cards are doubled, so I can go double hologram, double go for the eyes. Choose two cards. Hologram and Recycle? Let's go with those two. And then the next card is also played two times. I don't actually need to play Go for the Eyes twice yet. Let's go double Cool Headed. She waits. Let's go double Hologram again. Get back <clears throat> this Electrodynamics. And this hologram again. Recycle this electrodynamics. We'll cast this. Go for the eyes here. Full headed hologram of skill. Play that skill. working.
It seems to be working. Please, sir. Play some powers. Please. Loop is going to be worthwhile here. But not next. Well, yeah. Okay, let's go with a double loop here. There's some powers for you. We're gonna kill, that's a good question. Next question. We've definitely got the block game down though. Wait, is this... Infinite? Question mark? two times. Alright, get rid of this cool-headed. Get rid of this cool-headed. Maybe infinite now. Uh, but I can play the beam? Not to play the cool headed. That's correct. I believe this is now an infinite combo of some kinds. Although it's a very slow, very bad one. Note that we're actually gaining energy as I do this. We're properly infinite here. Because of Sundial. This is a hilarious way to win this fight.
The old sweeping beam overclock infinite. Classic. so little damage. Help! Draw more cards. Twenty-four turns a weekend, by the way. That's cute. Is going crazy. The stats. The stats. If you've ever wondered how to beat Awaken One with a power based deck, this is apparently the answer. Just. Infinite combo. Forehead. GG. Okay, we can't do that against Time Eater, which is fine. I'm not planning on doing it against Time Eater. I am planning on just scaling up with our powers here. Remember, we're allowed to play those now. So that's fine. Shoot. Do it this way. Okay. Nine by three. Wow. Ow. Oh, wait, but I do get uh, Auric Alchem. Yeah, let's just not play that. Yes. Hologram Recycle. Let's just get Creative AI in play. Creative AI is how we're going to win this fight. No consideration for double playing that capacitor, not with the echo form not in play yet at that moment. It's just lots of powers. Sound good? Sounds good to me. Easy. Four powers per turn. That's got to work, right? Smiley face. There we go. Really? 
Recycles in the drum pile. Got it. Put a storm in play. I think that ought to help. Let's go. The Zappening. GG. GG. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this going for eyes and frost orbs? And such. Turns out four powers a turn was really good. Who knew? Who knew? We're missing ten health outright. I might want to rest, or I could upgrade the other hologram. Which is very potent, actually, with these echo forms. Might want to do that. I'm going to do that. Upgrading cool headed could be reasonable too. Uh -oh. Card removal or a potion. Gambler's Brew seems exceedingly valuable here. Allowing me to look through the draw pile for all sorts of stuff. Liquid Memories could be nice too, getting back a card from the discard pile. Although notably, it's hard to get Echo Form into the discard pile. So I'll just take the Gambler's Bro. Double Energy could have been nice also. Alrighty, let's see here. Frank means you block for 22. Discharge is excellent here for next turn. If I dual cast, we block for 14. 24. 32, which would be a perfect block if we were facing the other way. It's not, though. Just lose the buffer. And that's okay. Unceasing Top's about to put in some work. Maybe. There are two curses in the draw pile, so I shouldn't get too excited. To that end, I'm not going to hologram the aggregate for even more energy because I think our combo is going to get stopped at some point. When I draw the Tempest, I suppose, is appropriate. Followed by a Cinder Spade. Fair enough indeed. Now here's a problem. Playing this Echo Form is not going to fly. I can't turn around either, which means we're taking a big hit. Unless Buffer were to appear suddenly. Not good. Hmm. Tough choice. Tough choice. So I could Gambler's Brew now. I could Power Potion now, too. I think the Power Potion would likely be a waste, though. Let's start with Cool-Headed. 
let's see what the top card is. It is hologram. Okay. Good. So I can hologram aggregate for plus two energy. Or I can hologram go for the eyes and turn around. That's way better. Hologram go for the eyes. I think that means I have to get electro in play. That feels pretty reasonable. I'll take two small hits, and we'll get lots of orbs for it, too. Thank you so much for the Prime sub, and whoever just used that HelloFresh code. Thanks for getting us to number nine. Nine in one stream is way, way more than I was hoping for. I'm going to be very honest with everybody. So this has been a, a spectacular uh, outcome for our, our first HelloFresh-sponsored stream. I'm, I'm really happy here. Everybody who uses a code for HelloFresh, that one there on screen... Uh, both helps support the stream significantly, plus you get fresh, healthy food of your choosing delivered to your house, helping you save time on meal planning and spicing up life just a little bit more. What happened to my focus? Hmm, can I do 21 damage here? Letter opener says maybe. Double, I uh, can't double anything, right? Hmm, that's a no. Uh-oh. Hmm. Crap. Might have to use the Gambler's Brew here. Spinning Top does technically draw me one card, but I'll have zero energy left. I need to deal more damage. Or block for a bajillion. That works too. There we go. Ground buffer. And another plonk sound. You're all too kind. Get him, defect. Ten out of ten. Out of fifteen. Out of ten. That goal will keep going up. I think the, the max max is uh, 25, is my understanding. And at that point, I get the biggest possible bonus for myself in the stream, which is absolutely mental. More echoing. Just get the kill here.
Much appreciation, appreciation to the, all of those who would be in a position to make use of this promotion if it were international. Alas, it is not. So I have to say US only for the HelloFresh deal. But note it that there's a lot of you out there scattered across various countries who wouldn't mind helping out. Oh my lord, we do get a potion back. Essence of Darkness plus the all-important Mummy Hand, making something in hand free whenever I play a power card. Lastly, but actually not leastly at all... Oh, I have Anchor. Maybe I don't need Boot Sequence. Infinite AI. Okay, let's just keep it as we are. Yes. Turn one, echo form. And we haven't the, the full two weeks, Fele. So I, I truthfully wasn't expecting a whole lot of people to sign on until I actually got the box here and opened it up. But yeah, we have we have two full weeks to get there. I can even play it for free. That's true. You'll love to see it. Hello. Do I drink the power potion now or do I want it next turn when I can duplicate the contents? I think I want it next turn. Okay, next turn. And worst case scenario, we can evoke these frost orbs with the essence of darkness to get a block card. So for example, here's where I, I really want to make sure we have this one buffer from the thingamajig intact. Double, double hologram fetching, force field, and hologram, I'm thinking. I may really want to use this, actually. Because then I can double loop, which I can't do otherwise. Well, let's see what's in here. Double machine learning. Wait, 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 wait. Double machine learning, double loop. time. Bang. Beautiful. Double defrag? Yes. Double go for the eyes? Yes. Double beam, maybe? No, double go for the eyes.
Didn't get static discharge in play. That stings a little bit. Hmm. Wow, what a turn. Still haven't seen our recycle either. Our blocks aren't very good. Good. Double heat sinks looks really good with how many uh, powers we're creating. I think I think we've gotten through the difficult part of this fight chat. out on some block this turn, but I think that's okay. Wrong so many cards. Yeah. Let's get rid of this creative AI this turn. Should have gotten rid of Curse the Bell. That's the only thing that can break my unceasing top now. At least get rid of this defense. Beautiful. Recycle, hello? Get rid of this card and this card. More energy next turn. I should play Hello World. Additional cards could be a problem for us. The Batman! Thank you so much for the 14... Sorry, the four moons. Not 14, but four. Four moons of support. 
deck is absurd. Just filthy. That was a casual 66 damage orb? Oh yeah, because I looped it four times. Wait, what? That seems good. Okay, we're just about infinite. Problem is that we've... gotten rid of, well, most of the heart's health already, so there's not a whole lot of... Not a whole lot of benefit to being infinite, but hey, I'll take this win. This is such a cool run. GG, Twitch chat. GG. Get him, letter opener. You got this. Hey there, if you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.